well, no one else is gonna do it, so I might as well. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. So several weeks ago, in my Evermore video, which you should watch if you haven't, uh, I just mentioned that for some reason, in a lot of romance books, especially young adult romance books, for some reason, it just features really, really bad abuse of romantic partners. Like, it's rarely physical abuse. It sometimes is physical abuse, but it, it's rarely physical abuse. It's mostly stuff like, you know, extremely controlling behavior, emotional abuse, cutting them off from their family and social circles, you know, etc. that sort of thing. And it's just really common and also not acknowledged as abuse and also, like, just not even brought up as a problem a lot of the time, so the main character and their love interest just kind of go on being happy together. And the main thing about this is that, like a lot of stuff, it's an iceberg. You know, you only see a little bit above the water, but there's so much more below it. Like, and a lot of the stuff that you know of at the top is not even that bad comparatively. Like, Edward watching Bella sleep and stalking her before they're together is like the very, very tippity tip top of the iceberg. And like, that's bad, don't get me wrong, but Compared to some of the other shit here, it is not even worth mentioning, quite frankly. And in my Evermore video, I just mentioned that someone should make a video, like an iceberg video, going over all of the horrible abusive things that love interests do in romance novels, especially young adult romance novels, I don't know why. But I just decided, you know what, why not? I'll, I'll do it. No one else seems to. It's not like there's a law that says after I do this, no one else is allowed to. And how I'm doing this is gonna be that the farther down you go on the iceberg, the worse it is. Not necessarily the more obscure it is. Now, there's there's a correlation between those two things, like some of the things that are really bad are more obscure, some of them aren't that obscure, but whatever the case is, they're getting worse as it goes down. I, I know that's not how iceberg videos are supposed to work, but I don't care. Iceberg videos were a stupid trend anyways. And uh, yeah, so let's get going. Um, I will note that if I mention a book here, expect there to be spoilers, so be aware. And also, this is talking about some kind of unpleasant topics. You know, again, it's abuse in relationships, so if you don't want to hear about that, then you should leave now. Goodbye. So we're going to start off with tier one of the iceberg, like the very top, what you can see above the water. And this is stuff that is really bad, but forgivable. You know, like, if you explain to someone why it's wrong and they understand that what they did was wrong and they move past it and don't do it anymore, then you could see that relationship still working out. It might be a bit of a long shot, but it, it it's, you know, you could see it. First is from Twilight, uh, and again, that's just Edward watching Bella sleep and kind of sort of stalking her for a little while before they're together. Like, that's creepy, yes, but she seems cool with it, <laughs> I suppose. And it's not like he's doing anything untoward with, like, her possessions or her personally. And he does, like, actually keep an eye on her and protect her. So, I mean, it could be a lot worse. Like, honestly, something Edward does that belongs much lower on the iceberg is that he straight up damages her car at one point to prevent her from going out to see one of her other friends because he wants to control who she is allowed to have friendships with. It's like... It's not good, but yeah, the, the stalking thing is not that awful, really, in the grand scheme of things. The second one is from a more obscure series, which I talked about a few months ago, called Elemental. And basically, in this one, it's what you would expect. A normal girl runs into Supernatural Boy, and then there's, like, this whole conflict uh, where a bunch of people called the Guides, who, like, police the Supernatural world, are gonna come in and attack them and Becca has a love triangle with some dude, and he's not important. The, uh, but her secondary love interest is a guy named Hunter, and we find out near the end of the book that he has actually been lying to her this whole time, and he's been working with the guides who are coming after her friends, and he actually winds up helping them, uh, helping the guides imprison her friends at the end and nearly kill them. Now, that would be pretty bad, and in fact, Becca straight up acknowledges it in the book that it's bad, which is, like, a, a rarity for some reason, but yeah, she straight up acknowledges that it's bad, and in the later books, her and Hunter 
remain friends, but she straight up tells him, like, yeah, this whole relationship thing is not going to happen between us because you lied. And it would be worse, but he does actually help her and the other characters rescue their friends at the end. Like, he changed his mind, so, you know, it, it could be a lot worse. Next up is going to be from Fallen, and that is how, at the end of the first book, Daniel just abandons Lucinda at a different school on the other side of the country. Like, again, this series is pretty simple to understand. Like, main character girl goes to school, falls in love with boy, finds out he's actually a fallen angel, also finds out that she's been dying and reincarnating over and over again for thousands of years, and she doesn't know why. And then in order to protect her from forces who might be after her, uh, her BF Daniel just flies her to a school on the other side of the country, and then just leaves her there for most of the second book, and, like, it's for her safety, you know, she's not in any real danger while she's over there, or she's in less danger while she's over there, but she's also, like, isolated from her friends and family and everybody, and she, her entire world has been turned upside down by all this knowledge of, like, angels and shit being real. Like, you could at least, you owe her some support, man. Like, you should be talking to her throughout this and communicating with her and making sure that she understands you're there for her, at the very least. So that's the end of tier one. We're now moving on to tier two. And this tier I'm going to call the break up with them tier. Like, again, it's something that's so heinous you really can't get past it. You just need to break up with them, move on with your life, never talk to them again because this some of this is pretty bad. First up is going to be from After, and if you've read that book, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Granted, there's a lot of things that could fit here, but I'm going to put the whole virginity bet thing there. So basically, After is... Again, if you haven't read it, it's like stupidly simple, but it's such a long book for some reason. I don't know why. Basically, the main character girl, whose name no one cares about, uh, it goes off to college, and she's away from her mom and her old boyfriend and everything, and she... Uh, gets involved with this dude named Hardin Scott, who was originally Harry Styles. Uh, and we find out near the end, like after they've been in a relationship for a while, that Hardin actually made a bet with some of his friends that he could take her virginity. And he actually, like, kept bedsheets with blood on them as proof that he took her virginity. And, well, yeah, that, that's, uh, I don't think I need to explain too much about that. That is extremely gross, awful behavior on his part. Like, it is extremely manipulative, for one, and it is extremely objectifying, for another. Like, it is taking main character girl and reducing her down to something that can be bet over, you know, rather than a person with her own agency and everything. It's just, it's just gross behavior, and for some reason the whole series continues on for a while after that. After that, we're gonna have Light Lark, and I don't even feel bad about spoiling this because that entire book is just so... It, it's nonsense. Like, everything that happens in it is nonsense. But basically, uh, we have main character girl, who, again, you don't care about her name. Uh, she goes to this magical competition, and then things happen. But while she's there, she meets a foreign king whose name is Grimm, and the two of them kind of, sort of, fall in love, I guess. Like, they start making out and <laughs> in the hallways and stuff like that. Again, I'm not making that up. That's a real... Those are real things that happen in this book. It's, it's wild. Uh, but basically, we find out uh, that she, she's never met Grimm before this, right? But then at the end of the book, we find out that she actually did know Grimm before. They were in a relationship before. But before the competition, he erased her memories without her knowledge or her consent because he didn't want her to be distracted by him being there. And, like, okay, obviously this is an awful, awful thing to do to someone. Like, it's a violation of their privacy. It's a violation of their mind itself. Like, that's in insane. Like, an insanely, insanely th bad thing to do. But, uh, honestly, I feel like it would be worse if Lightlark weren't just so nonsensical. Like, it, it, that's the worst thing about Lightlark, is that none of it just makes any sense. Like, the character motivations make no sense and change all the time. The world makes no sense. The story makes no sense. Like, the events... I don't see how they lead into one another. It's just dumb. And, like, Grimm was trying not to distract her, but then as soon as she shows up, again, they start making out and <laughs> So, like, it, what? It's just extremely dumb. Like, even though this should maybe be on a lower tier, it's so stupid that I have to put it in tier two. 
This next one is from Elixir by Hilary Duff, and it's a little unusual because this one is actually the main character doing something horrible to their partner instead of the other way around, which it usually is. A uh, short version of this story is that... <laughs> God, there's, there's no short version, but uh, main character girl uh, has a boyfriend who drank the Elixir of Immortality hundreds of years ago, and ever since then she has like died and reincarnated several times. There's multiple series with this exact premise, by the way. Uh, died and reincarnated several times, and in this most recent iteration, in the modern day, uh, he there's people after him that want to kill him so that they can use his blood to make more elixir of life and make themselves immortal. And at the end of the first book, he's going to commit suicide with like this magical ritual in order to prevent that from happening, and because he also just doesn't want to live anymore. He's been alive for centuries. And main character girl, despite meeting him like three days earlier, decides to just tell the bad guys where he is so that they will come in and stop him from killing himself and then kidnap him so that they can use him in their evil plans. Which, I want to reiterate, their evil plans still involve killing him. So it's not like she's really saving his life here. And they actually do succeed in killing him in the second book, but then he just comes back. These, these books are wild. That's just, I don't know, you're, you're taking away his choice in the matter and letting him get abducted and imprisoned by people who want him dead for nefarious purposes. That's horrible. The last entry in Tier 2 is also the main character doing something terrible to their love interest. It is... It's from Stones to Abigail. I just... I cannot escape the Onision trilogy. I, I can't. It's going to haunt me until I die. But anyways, uh, that's a simple enough story. Main character, who is unfortunately named James, uh, is just a high school student who falls in love with this girl named Abby, who goes to school with him. Uh, and then later in the book, there's a, a shooting at their school. Like, Abby's ex-boyfriend, whose name is Seth, comes in and shoots a whole bunch of the fellow student, their fellow students and kills a whole bunch of them, right? And then, weeks after that, uh, Abby is questioned by the police uh, because they find out she wrote a letter to Seth, which might have inspired him to do the shooting. Like, she says she wishes everyone would disappear, which is not really... That, that's not telling him to do a shooting, and the police figure that out pretty quick, so they, you know, let her go without any issue. However, afterwards, she tells James about this, and him, rather than saying you know, the logical thing, which is, oh, yeah, you didn't actually do anything wrong, and, like, just being there to support her, basically, he immediately, without saying a word, just, like, leaves the room and goes to brood in the shower for a while, and the book explicitly says that she's, like, panicking and basically begging him without words not to leave, but he does it anyways, and, um... That's, that's, that's a shitty thing to do. You know, she, she's emotionally fragile at the moment, and she feels an incredible amount of guilt over what happens. Like, again, it's not her fault by any logical sense, but, you know, your brain sometimes doesn't follow that logic and tells you to feel bad about things like that, and you need to be there to support her. Yeah, and she's been there to support him throughout this whole book, and his difficult times, but instead he just leaves for a while, and then he does come back and say, you know, you didn't do anything wrong, but which, like, no shit, but the fact that he waited is awful, and it, it I, I don't know if it's manipulative really, but is a horrible thing to do to someone. Now we've reached tier three. Tier three is pretty simple. Run and call the cops. Like, if someone did this, then you should run, and you should call the cops. Like, don't just break up with them. Stay as far away as possible, and try to get charges pressed. First up is A Court of Thorns and Roses, and it is just everything Tamlin does in A Court of Thorns and Roses. Just, just everything. Like, I will admit, I, I still, I haven't read these books, and I'm not going to, because there's so many other people who have already done really in-depth criticism on YouTube, I wouldn't have anything new to add. But, I, I have watched, like, multi-hour-long uh, summaries of this. I feel like I understand the context and everything enough to comment on this, but yes, th this is kind of a retelling of the Beauty and the Beast story, where main character girl shoots a wolf in the woods, and it turns out that wolf was a fae in disguise. A I mean, it seems like his fault, you know, if you're an animal in the woods and a hunter shoots you, like, that's your fault. You didn't identify yourself. But anyways, and one of his friends comes out and says, hey, according to some obscure treaty, I get to take you back to the world, to Fey world with me. Like, 
we have to do that, otherwise there'll be a war. And so main character girl's like, okay. And so he takes her away from her family and everything, and uh, they fall in love over the course of the story, sort of. Again, Beauty and the Beast. However, we find out later on that the treaty he's talking about is nonsense. Like, it's, it is not what he says it is, and he was just lying because he wanted to keep her at his castle as basically uh, a slave. So he basically kidnapped her. But on top of that, he physically attacks slash hurts her mo uh, a couple of points. Like, there's a scene where he specifically, like, pins her up against a wall and she begs him to let her go, and he doesn't, and he's, like, touching her inappropriately, and he bites her on the neck until she bleeds, and he, like, licks it up, and it's supposed to be hot or whatever, but, like, that's just straight-up sexual assault is what it is. It, it just, it's sexual assault. Like, he doesn't full-on her or anything, so that's nice, but, uh, that's still sexual assault. And next up on the list is going to be everything Resand does in Akatar because <laughs> Resand is just the other part of the love triangle who main character girl fall, winds up leaving Tamlin for for whatever reason. I don't know. They're both terrible. But basically, Resand uh, makes some sort of deal with Tamlin so that he gets to own main character girl for one week out of every month. Again, just so that he she can be a slave for him a quarter of the time. Uh, and he forces her to drink like this weird wine uh, a lot, which just makes her black out so she doesn't remember anything. And then he like just takes her to bed every time. And it's like, he, he as far as we know, he doesn't just straight up date right now, but we don't know for certain. And the fact that we don't know for certain is Oh, God. And, I mean, again, even if he doesn't full-on... He, um... He is... Uh, God. Uh, just, no. No. Next, we have Save the Pearls. God, I hate this so much. And in that one, a main character girl, her name is Eden, uh, goes up to the surface after the apocalypse because most of humanity lives underground, and she's there with her furry boyfriend named Bramford. And then she does something stupid, and Bramford just straight up imprisons her. Like, yeah, like, there's a little shack in the forest. He just imprisons her in there, locks the doors so she can't get out. I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory. Like, what the fuck? The final entry in Tier 3 comes from Hush Hush, and that is, like, main character girl, her father is killed some point before the story begins. That becomes important in a couple of minutes, trust me. Uh, and then she starts having these weird things happen around her uh, because she meets a dude who turns out to be a fallen angel whose name is Patch, and throughout most of the book, he is just straight up stalking her because he's planning on killing her, <laughs> which he doesn't want to, he's being forced to, but still, he is planning on killing her, and then later he just forces his way into her house while she's home, and her parents aren't. Yeah, um... Yeah, like, he, he, I think he only gets away with that because he's hot. Like, I think, again, you, I shouldn't have to explain why that one's bad. Finally, we have reached the bottom of the iceberg, and this tier I'm just calling Nuke It From Orbit. So the first entry on tier four is also from Hush Hush, and that is how Patch kills Nora's dad. Yeah, before the events of the story, he is the one who murdered her mother or, excuse me, who murdered her father. <laughs> like, again, he was forced to do it. He didn't want to do it. But still, I, I, I think your chances of being in a relationship with someone should be zero if, that, if you do that. I don't think you should be dating them after that for any reason. Like, that's just... Oh, God, what the fuck. Next up is Article 5, which is a pretty obscure book. I mention it once or twice, like, two years ago, three years ago. Uh, but anyways, this is a, just a crappy dystopian story about a young girl and her mother who get arrested and separated by the government because they, they're, it's like a religious extremist government and uh, it's a single woman living with a kid, which is just not okay to them. Uh, and then while they're being arrested, one of the soldiers doing it is one of their old neighbors who, main character girl, her name is Ember, recognizes his name is Chase. And Chase actually helps her escape from where she's being held later on, and they 
Most of the rest of the book is them running across the uh, country, trying to escape. And then he Chase keeps telling her, like, okay, we'll meet your mom later, don't worry. She's fine. And near the end, we find out that Chase executed her mother. <laughs> like, again, he didn't want to do it. He was forced to do it. And that's part of what finally made him desert and try to save Ember. But still, he, he was... He shot her mother in the head while she was being held prisoner. That's... Yeah, okay. I wish I wasn't so speechless with so many of these, but they're just... They're just baffling decisions. <laughs> they just are. Next up, we have Reaper's Creek. Again, I will never escape the Onision trilogy. This one, very simple. Main character dude named Daniel finds out he has godlike powers and that he can bend reality to his whim, right? And he has a girlfriend named Julie. And at one point... They go to dinner with her parents, and while there, he murders her father. <laughs> this, why is this such a common theme? <laughs> but, okay, so the reason he murders her father, though, is because her father is a serial killer. And he discovers that just out of nowhere. Like, he reads her father's mind and discovers, oh, this guy's a serial killer. He's killed a bunch of women before. And then he just instantly kills him. Now debatable whether or not he deserved it. You know, you, you could argue like, okay, he should do, he should kill him, but the way he goes about it is really, really bad. Because again, he just killed his girlfriend's father right in front of her, but he knows that she's gonna freak out uh, if, uh, if she doesn't understand what's going on, so he immediately takes all the memories of her father murdering and attacking women and just puts it into her head. <laughs> So she just sees all this shit instantly and just knows everything. <laughs> like, God, how traumatic would that be? Like, dude, that nuke it from orbit, okay? That's not okay. Nuke it from orbit. Next is House of Night, and I promise this one isn't about murdering anyone's parents, but uh, House of Night, very simple to understand. Uh, main character girl named Zoe, uh turns into a vampire, goes to a special school for vampires, and not long after that, she drinks a little bit of the blood of a human guy she used to know at school, and it, that forms like a really powerful mental magical bond between them, so they're like obsessed with each other, and they have some limited telepathy, so they can kind of feel each other's thoughts and stuff. You know, pretty, uh, pretty easy to understand. Uh, but later, Zoe... She wasn't exactly in a relationship with the dude, but she basically cheats on him with another guy and has sex with the other guy. And while it's happening, she, uh, her and the dude that she has a bond with can kind of feel each other's emotions, and it breaks the bond, basically. Her having sex with another, another dude breaks the bond. And it's extraordinarily painful for them. And for days afterwards, she just doesn't say anything. And then when she finally runs into other dude, he says, I thought you were dead. What the fuck? Like... She basically mentally and possibly physically attacked this dude, uh, get, caused him a lot of pain, again, physically and mentally, and ma made him think that she was dead. And she just, she didn't think to, like, call him or anything to, not only to say that she's okay, but to ask if he is alright. Because it never occurs to her to stop and say, hey, wait, is he alright? This one actually kind of does belong in Tier 4 just because of obscurity, but also because of how bad it is. It is a book called Abandon by Meg Cabot. And Abandon is like kind of a retelling of the Hades and Persephone myth, where like Hades kidnaps her and brings her to the, under to the underworld to be his wife. Uh, and she eats a little bit of food while she's down there, which winds up making her be trapped there for six months out of the year. And those six months are winter. Uh, and Abandon is kind of like that, main character girl, uh, falls in love with a god of death. He's only god of part of the underworld, though, and so she just goes down there and is with him for a while, and she eats some cereal while she's down there, and then he tells her afterwards, like, oh, uh, eating food traps you here forever, sorry. And she takes that remarkably well, all things considered. Um, and then later she talks to somebody else, they tell her, okay, you can't get pregnant in the underworld, because magic, whatever, and so she has sex with her underworld boyfriend. And then after that, when they're having an argument, he just tells her basically, oh yeah, well actually it was having sex with me that traps you here forever, so ha, there. I don't know if that counts as...
but it feels pretty close. And finally, at the bottom of tier 4, we have something from Evermore, which again, you should have watched that whole video by now. Why are you here if you haven't watched that? Go watch that. But uh, again, that is yet another series where main character girl keeps dying and getting reincarnated and falling in love with her immortal boyfriend who's immortal because he drank the elixir of immortality. But uh, basically, before the series begins, uh, main character girl's, her name is Ever, and her boyfriend is named Damon, by the way. Uh, and Ever's family dies in a horrible car crash, and she almost dies too. But we find out near the end of the first book that Damon was nearby. Uh, we'll discuss that in a moment. Uh, and he gave her some of the elixir of immortality to save her life. So he actually made her immortal without asking her. That, now that's pretty bad on its own. Like, he did save her life, so at first you might be thinking, okay, that's, that's fine, I guess. Like, he... He did save her, but also eh, doing that without someone's consent is kind of iffy. But it becomes much less iffy later on, because in the third book, we learn that uh, everyone who drinks the Elixir of Immortality goes to hell. Like, a after they die, and the immortals in this series are remarkably easy to kill, but after they die, they go to hell for eternity, full stop. Like, so Ever is never going to get to see her family in the afterlife again, and she's just going to live eternity in torment forever after she dies. And Damon knew about this too. Like, it was not something that he found out at the same time she did. He knew about this and he still did it to her because, oh, I couldn't bear to leave you. Like, dude, not okay. What the actual fuck is wrong with you? And uh, the reason he was nearby when the car crash happened is actually because he's been stalking her since she was 10 years old. Like, in, in this current incarnation, he's been stalking her since she was 10 years old. And um, he, he specifically says, like, no, I wasn't going to start a relationship with you when you were a kid. I was just waiting until you were ready. Oh, okay, yeah. And uh, I don't have an organic place to put this, but in one of her previous lives, he literally bought her and owned her as a slave for a while. So, yeah. Now, this was by no means an exhaustive list. Uh, if you have more to talk about, please... Please tell me down below, because I find this weirdly concerning, but also extremely funny. <laughs> I can't I can't deny it is extremely funny to me. Uh, but yeah, I think I, I think it's fine to write stuff like this, you know, having like weird fantasies or whatever is fine as long as you acknowledge that it's not okay in real life. And part of acknowledging that it's not okay in real life is making videos like this and talking about it and laughing at it and you know other people if you are into this sort of thing then that's fine you can have your trash i have my trash but um yeah that's about it uh just weird abusive shit that love interests do to other love interests in books for some reason and i don't know why it's so prevalent but it is goodbye Huge thank you to everyone who watched this far, uh, especially all my patrons. You can see all their names here. They, like, give me money on Patreon every month, which is pretty cool. Uh, all my $10 and up patrons are Oppo Savalainen, Olivia Rayen, Brother Santotis, Buffy Valentine, Carolina Clay, Dan Antselievich, Dark King, Dio, Echo, Flax, Carcat Kitsune, Eliza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Microphone, Mist Boy, Peep the Toad, Robbie Reviews, Sad Mardigan, Sillier the Vixen, Stone Stairs, Tesla Shark, Vevictus, and Wesley. I greatly appreciate every single one of you. <clears throat> and if you want to get your name on here, then, you know, go to Patreon, become one of my patrons. If you don't feel like doing that, you can also become a YouTube channel member, or just, you know, hit the tip button, the thanks button down below, or send me a tip on PayPal, or, you know, just rate the video, commenting on it, and subscribing to my channel. That's also, that's great. Uh, I'm running out of things to say, but goodbye. Thanks.